Hello, Matthews Gatos here. Welcome to section 9.3, quadratic inequalities. Before we do that though, I want to review with you linear inequalities. So because this is a review question, I want you to pause the video, try the question yourself, and then come back to see the solution. So in this question, I want to write the inequality shown in the graph below. So my very first step is to draw the equation of the boundary line. And I see that it's a line, so because it is a line, my equation is y equals mx plus b. So I need to find out my y-intercept and my slope. So looking at the graph, I see that my y-intercept is negative 3, so I will plug that into my equation. Then I need to figure out what the slope is. So because I have two points, I can count the rise over run between those two points. So I can see that I'm rising 3, I'm running 4. So my slope is positive 3 over 4. So now that I have my boundary line equation, y equals 3 quarters of an x minus 3, I just look at the way that it's shaded and the type of line that it is. So I see that it is a dotted line which means it doesn't include solutions on the line, and it's shaded above. So I know that my inequality is y greater than 3 quarters of an x minus 3. Let's try this question. Again, it is a review question, so I want you to try it on your own, pause it, come back and see the solution. So I have four possible solutions to the inequality shown below. I'm going to code these solutions as either being a solution or not a solution. So the way that I can check this is through substitution. So let's look at point A. So in my original inequality, my equation is 2x minus 3 greater than 6. So all I'm going to do is take my x coordinate and my y coordinate and substitute them in with brackets. Then I just have to use order of operations to work out my solution. Negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12 and 6 plus 12 is 18. Now since 18 is greater than 6, that point satisfies the inequality, so it is a solution. Let's try the next one, point B. So again, I will substitute in my x and my y values. I will use order of operations to work it out. 12 take away 6 is 6. Now is 6 greater than 6? No, it's equal to 6 but not greater than. Let's look at point C. So substitute in my x value, substitute in my y value, and use order of operations to work it out. So here I have negative 28 greater than 6. Negative 28 is not greater than 6, so I know that point C is not a solution. Let's try point D. So again, substitute in my x value, substitute in my y value, and then use order of operations to work it out. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9, and negative 2 plus 9 is 7. 7 is greater than 6, so I know that point D is a solution. So the code to this numeric question would be 1, 2, 2, 1. So let's look at what we're going to do in this video. We are going to do quadratic inequalities. So this is very similar to the process that I used for the last video, linear inequalities. It's just now my boundary line is not a line, it is a parabola. So let's again go and verify. Same thing we did in the review question with a quadratic. The process is the same. So I want to know which ordered pairs are solutions to y greater than x squared plus 2x minus 8. So all I'm going to do is take my y value and my x value. Because it is a quadratic, I could have two substitutions. So I'm just going to substitute in my values, work it out, and see if it is true or false. So 4 greater than 2 squared plus 2 times 2 minus 8. So this is 8, take away 8 is 0. So 4 is greater than 0, so yes, this is a solution. Let's look at my next one. Same process, substitute y, substitute x, use brackets for all your substitutions, and then do order of operations to work it out. So negative 3 squared is negative 3 times negative 3, positive 9, 2 times negative 3, minus 8. So 6 take away 3 is 3, and 3 take away 8 is negative 5. Negative 6 is not greater than negative 5. 
So that point B is not a solution. And then we just keep going, same process. So 18 greater than, four times four is 16, plus two times eight, take away eight. So that's just 18 greater than 16, and that is true, so point C is on the solution. Then our last one, point D, we do the same thing. Substitute x and y with brackets. Use order of operations to work it out. Negative 5 squared, negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. 2 times negative 5, negative 10. Take away 8. So 25 take away 10 is 15. 15 take away 8 is 7. 7 is not greater than 7. So the solutions would just be point A and point C. Let's look at the steps to graphing quadratic inequalities. This page here is the same page I put in for linear inequalities. I still isolate y. I do it by making y positive. But this is the different step. This is the only thing different on this page. I find the intercepts and the vertex of the boundary line, and that boundary line is a quadratic. So you could have it in form ax squared plus bx plus c, or you could have it in vertex form, a times x minus p squared plus q. Still use a dotted line if it doesn't equal to, a solid line if it does, shade above and below. So just follow your boundary line and shade above it or below it, depending on the inequality. Remember, the solution to an inequality is an area of solution. So it's all the points in that shaded area. So there are infinite solutions to inequalities. Let's look at this example. So the first thing that I'm going to do to solve this inequality is isolate y. I want y all by itself, and I want it to be positive. So since it's already positive, I'm just going to add x squared to both sides, and I get y minus 2x greater than or equal to x squared minus 8. Then I will add 2x to both sides to get my final inequality, y is greater than or equal to x squared plus 2x minus 8. So this is what we are going to solve graphically. So let's look at our graphing steps. Very first step is to graph my boundary line, which is the parabola, labeling all your intercepts and the vertex. So you can see I have my x-intercepts, my y-intercepts, and the vertex labeled. That's my boundary line. Next thing is, looking at the inequality, I see that it was equal to, so I'm just going to keep my boundary line solid. If it wasn't equal to, I would do a dotted line. Now, I have to look at greater than, so I'm going to trace along my boundary line and always shade above since it's greater than. So follow the path of the boundary line and shade above since it's greater than. So you can see it's going to be between the arms of the parabola. Last step, check. So pick any point. Now, if you can, always choose the vertex. It's the easiest point to check. Sorry, the origin, not the vertex. If 0, 0 is in your area of solution, that's the best point to pick. And then I just, to check, go into my original inequality, substitute x for 0, y for 0. I get 0 is greater than negative 8, which is true, so I know I've done that correctly. Okay, I want you guys to try this one. So pause the video, try this on your own, come back and see the solution. The first thing that we have to do is isolate y. So to get y by itself and it's positive, I need to get rid of this plus 3 by subtracting 3 from both sides of the inequality. So the inequality I'm going to solve is y less than x squared plus 2x minus 3. So let's follow the same steps we did before. So I'm going to graph the boundary line labeling all my vertices and my intercepts. So you can see I have my x-intercepts, my y-intercept, and my vertex. Now, since this inequality was less than, not less than or equal to, I need to make my boundary line dotted. So you can see I've made it a dotted line. Now, I'm doing less than, so I follow the path of the parabola, and I'm always going to shade below that path. So this is what it's going to look like. So shading below it, there is my area of solution. The last thing I have to do is check. Now, I can't pick the origin because that's not in the area of solution, so just pick any other point. 
to solve or to check in your original inequality. So I just chose the point 3, 3. And I put that into my original inequality. And I get that 6 is less than 15. And that is true. So I know I did this question correctly. So now that we know how to go from an inequality to a graph, let's look at all the different possibilities. So again, you can do these on your calculator. So if I have a parabola that opens up, I can have greater than or equal to, which is all the way around my boundary line, always shading above, so it's in between the arms. I could have less than or equal to, so going all the way around here and shading below. If I had a parabola that opens down, the process is still the same, greater than. I go around the boundary line and I shade above. This one here opens down, but it's less than. So as I go around the boundary line, I shade below so it's in between. So those are the different possibilities with either a solid or a dotted line. So let's look at how do we go from the picture, the graph, to the inequality. So for this one here, I want to write the inequality. So the first thing I'm going to start with is my boundary line, which is a quadratic, and I'm going to choose vertex form. Next step, I look at the vertex, 2 and negative 6, and I'm going to substitute that in for P and Q. So, so far, my boundary line is Y equals A, X minus 2 squared minus 6. Next thing I need to do is figure out my A value. So I'm just going to pick this point here that's labeled, use X for 0 and Y for negative 5 for the purpose of solving for A. So you can see I replace y with negative 5, x with 0, and then I work that out. So I have negative 2 squared, which is 4, times a minus 6, add 6 to both sides, and divide by 4. So my boundary line is y equals to 1 quarter, x minus 2 squared, minus, and this should say 6. Let's change that to a 6. There we go. So all I have to do now is look at the way that it's shaded. Now, first thing is, I notice that it is a dotted line and I'm shading below it. So see, as I trace my way around, I'm always below. So my inequality is going to be y less than a quarter, x minus two squared minus six. That would be my inequality that matches that graph. So in this one here, I want you to try this. Pause the video, try it on your own, come back and see the solution. So in this one here again I have a boundary line that is a quadratic. So I start with the vertex form of my quadratic. Then I plug in my vertex. The vertex right here is negative 1 and 5. So plugging in my vertex I have x plus 1 squared plus 5. Then I substitute a point that it passes through. I'll choose the y-intercept here. So I replace x with 0 and y with 3. So doing that, I have 0 plus 1 is 1 squared is 1 times a. Subtract 5 from both sides, I get a is negative 5. Negative 2, sorry. When I subtract the 5, it's negative 2. And then my boundary line equation is negative 2 x plus 1 squared plus 5. So the last thing I need to do is look at the path of my inequality as I trace around it. It's a solid line it's equal to, and I'm always above that line. So my inequality is going to be y greater than or equal to x plus 1 squared plus 5. So hopefully that made sense to you, and there are no head tilts. If there were, I might have to go back and watch this video again. So you guys can work on practice questions 1 to 5, detailed solutions are on D2L, then move on to your textbook questions as needed. So I hope this video helped, and I look forward to seeing you for the next one.